Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Year 10 Physical World video series. This is video 2 and it's about the effects of forces and motion. In this video you're learning about the effects of forces and motion. And by the end of this video you will be able to describe the effects of forces in different examples and describe motion. So what can forces do? Forces can change the shape of an object. So if you look at this um, glass here, you could say that the pushing forces from these magnets made the glass buckle and crack. Forces can also change the direction of an object. So when these pushing forces are applied onto this glass, you can see that the direction it moves, it goes, it spins around like that. Forces can also change the way an object moves. So it can change the motion of an object. It can make something start moving. So this glass was still here. It, was, it wasn't moving. And then when forces are applied on it, it starts to spin wildly and it goes upside down. And look, it can also cause something to stop moving. So when these two magnets um, end up crashing onto each other, so when these two magnets crash onto each other, they like, they stop because they, they have nowhere else to go. It can cause objects that are already moving to speed up. So these magnets are already moving and as they move closer to each other, they speed up, they accelerate. And they also cause objects that are already moving to slow down. So what is motion? Motion or movement is a change in the position of an object with time. So let's say that I'm here and then after some seconds pass, I'm now here. I've moved from here to here. And we describe motion using the following terms. So we can describe motion using the following terms. And I'll just use a car as an example. The car could be stationary or at rest. It's resting and it's not moving. The car could be moving at a constant speed. So that's like if I was um, driving down a straight path of road at 50 kilometers an hour and there were no speed bumps and there were no pedestrian crossing. It's just a straight road with nothing going on. I'm moving at a constant speed of 50 kilometers an hour. A car could also be moving at an increasing speed or accelerating. So let's say I was on an on-ramp to a motorway, so I was going from 50 kilometers an hour and I needed to get to 100 kilometers an hour or else people would be complaining behind me that I would be going too slow. And we can describe motion as moving at a decreasing speed or decelerating. So let's say I was approaching a stoplight and I have to put my brakes on, I have to decrease my speed, I have to decelerate or else I'm gonna crash into the fancy car in front of me, so I have to decelerate to stop. When I've stopped at the stoplight, I'm gonna be back again at stationary, at rest and not moving. So, I have this activity for you guys that I would like you to complete in your books. So for each of these really fun gifts, that I picked the best ones for you guys. For each of these gifts, I would like you to write all of the forces you think are in action and how each force affects motion. Okay, so let, let's pick one of these and do it as an example. So let's go with this top left hand corner. It's called sluggish rocket launch. It's a play on words because it's a slug and it's a rocket launch. Okay, so let's think of some of the forces that are acting on this sluggish um, rocket launch. Well, we see this as a rocket. Now, what do you think the the rocket what kind of force is the rocket ap uh, applying here you could you could say it's applied force because it's the rocket is applying force onto the slug or you could equally say that it's it's thrust force um the rocket is part of the slug and it's thrusting it forward what else well it's it looks like it's on earth so gravity is probably acting on our slug here in the rocket well, gravity is pulling the slug and the rocket down, and so it's, it's pulling the, the direction of travel downwards. Is the slug moving through air or through water, or is it scraping through the ground? What am I trying to hint here? What's opposing the motion of this slug? Friction. And because it's moving through air, it's not scraping along concrete, or it's not scraping along something, or it's not moving through water. What's the type of friction through water? Uh, sorry, through air. Air resistance. An air resistance can cause the slug to decelerate. But if the thrust force 
is greater, if it's really, really, then it's going to overpower that air resistance force and it's going to take um, the slug from stationary, it's at rest, it's not moving the slug, and it's going to accelerate it into however fast it's going. Okay, so you don't need to be as thorough as that, but I would like you to write as many forces as you can think of that are acting on the skydiving cat, this running man, splat boy, and <laughs> making bread, and write how each force affects its motion. Okay, now I'd like you guys to get some more experience or some more practice with forces and motion. And so I would like you to do these two worksheets, Introduction to Forces and Motion Part 2 and Part 3. And these worksheets can be found on the Lemonade website and you can go to the Lemonade website by going to Google Classroom or clicking on this lemon. Cool, so the, uh, the worksheets are here. So by now you should be able to describe the effects of forces in different examples and describe motion. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, I hope you get some a lot of practice done on this, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me.